All right, this is going to be my review on a, a new box called the um, Open Hour uh, Chameleon. That's this little box right here. So I got this because I was, I was a huge fan of the uh, Open Hour uh, series of boxes. Uh, I've had them for years. Had them for years. Uh, I th actually, I think I still own one. I might still own the the A200. I had owned the Popcorn Hour A100, which was a parallel um, ATA hard drive. And then the A110, which was the first um, serial uh, SATA hard drive, or first SATA box that supported SATA hard drives. And then the 200, the 210, the 300, which is a monster, it looked like a huge VCR. And then I think I even purchased the 400, which I returned as quickly as possible, just because uh, by that time there was boxes that were able to do a lot more with uh, boxes that were running Android that could do a lot more. Especially with XBMC. XBMC is an amazing application. And uh, what's interesting about this device is actually it has a... Uh, everything runs off an SD card. Which is actually kind of interesting. Um, so the chances of you breaking the device are very slim. Uh, the SD card actually goes right there on the side where there's that little yellow piece right there. There's a yellow sticker and in there there's a SD card slot. And the entire operating system is actually running from it. And uh, I thought it was a neat idea until I had to actually scan. Uh, I had to install XBMC on there. Uh, and here, let me, let's, let's go navigate there first. And speaking of XBMC, it has to run a special version of XBMC just because the, the system of a chip is a, it's a Chinese uh, type of chip. It's called an uh, RK3822, if I'm not mistaken, or 3288. Let's see if this sucker tells you. It's a 3288, it's the RK3288. There it is, comparing it to other big name brands. Uh, hold on, let me focus that real quick. Sorry, I'm trying to do this all with one hand. Uh, come on, focus. There you go. So it's the 3288, RK3288. And there's the specs comparing it that it's better than every other box. This one actually supports 3D and 4K. And the only other box that I actually own that supports uh, 4K is the Mojo, the Mad Cat's Mojo. And uh, that box kind of sucks too. So, one thing that actually, one of the reasons I actually wanted to get this box is because this one actually offered a gigabit uh, Ethernet uh, connection. All the other boxes, the Fire TV, the, the Ouya, uh, the Mad Cat's, uh, um, they all offer only uh, fast Ethernet, which is 100 megabit per second um, Ethernet ports. This one was the first one to support an actual full um gigabit and when i ran uh i have this thing on on xda where i compare the uh the speeds of transferring a file over uh ftp and uh this one actually got a 7.1 megabits per second which is actually really really good uh, <laughs> megabytes is it megabytes per second i don't know I'll, I'll link to it in the bottom in the description but all the other ones got about i think the fire tv did the second best at like 4.3 um, and that's just running uh, 100 megabit. And keep in mind, even though it is a gigabit theoretical, it's not going to be that quickly, mostly. And, and it, actually, one of the reasons why it probably was that slow wasn't necessarily just the port was because of the, the SD card. It's actually not well classed. And I wish it would have given me a better one because when I was trying to scan my collection of uh, uh, of movies, it took an extremely long time. Um I think I let it run for two to three days because it was so slow. Um, and all the other boxes that I have, I have a Nexus player, I have a, I have a Nexus Q, <laughs> I have an Ouya, I have a Fire TV, a Fire TV stick, uh, the Mad Cat's Mojo, I think I mentioned that already. Um, all these boxes scan my collection rather quickly. My collection's about 1,600 uh, Blu-rays, uh, ranging from 1080 to 720. Some of them are standard definition. Some of the movies that I haven't, that I can't find Blu-ray copies of them, then, uh, you know, uh, those are still standard. But uh, for the most part, my majority of my movies are 720 and 1080p. And uh, it just took an extremely long time. Um, usually I have um, the library update as soon as I launch X, uh xbmc slash cody uh this one's cody and it's a special version of cody because it runs that chinese uh chip on there and and if you try to run the the regular cody version on there it just doesn't respond well at all um but but yeah uh, i was 
definitely disappointed. One of the things I thought was really cool is the, the fact that you wouldn't be able to break this box. And they said that you later on you can buy different SD cards that run different operating systems. They spoke about Ubuntu and other Linux uh, distros that you can run from there and then kind of use it as a computer. And uh, especially after seeing that uh, the right speeds takes that long, it was uh, it was it just kind of killed it for me. I, I was really hoping to enjoy this box. One of the other things that's really annoying is uh, I have an AV receiver down there that supports DTS, uh, DTS, well, audio HD. Also, it supports DTS HD and uh, True HD, as well as Dolby Digital AC3. But um, uh, one of the annoying things is that, that every single time you reboot this box, you actually have to go into settings, go to audio, and then you have to check that right there. I actually checked it prior to making this video. Um, just because I, I didn't want to forget and then ruin the, the my quick little preview of this little box. Um, but yeah, I had to turn that thing on because it just wouldn't work unless you do it. And, uh, and playing the media isn't so bad. Uh, this does support a gigabit, so it is faster than, uh, than other boxes out there. Uh, Fire TV, Nexus Player, other boxes like that. But uh, as far as playing media, there's really no difference. I mean... Yeah, that has nothing to do with the SD card since it's not local. But, um... Oh, wow, is it even playing anything? Let's see, let's just try to play a quick little file. And there it is. Plays just fine. One of the things I actually enjoyed about this box actually was the ability for it to play other media that my Fire TV struggled with. And, and one of those was, uh... was a VC1 file. And I don't know if I still have those here somewhere. I might not, but uh, definitely that was one of the, oh wait, maybe if I go back into movies. No, it's not on here. I had some um, some Blu-ray rips, uh, not just the MKVs, but like the whole, it had the subtitles and you know, all the other, the other stuff, the menu structure with it as well. <laughs> that I was going to show you right now, but uh, I thought I had it linked already, I'm not, I'm not about to do that right now. And uh, and it actually played the movie f really well, the VC1. It started dropping frames after, you know, after 30 minutes of playback or so, but I was just surprised it was able to handle it, you know, at all uh, because the Fire TV just choked with it. The Nexus player choked with it. Uh, the Ouya, again, choked with it. Even the Nexus Q running uh, Satagen Mod, I believe, 10 uh, with XBMC on there. Uh, they all just kind of seemed to choke. Um, one of the other cool things is... Uh, STB emulator, which is an application that lets you connect into uh, private um, uh, servers for uh, to watch TV shows. Uh, this is kind of growing right now in popularity right now, and uh, and I was really happy that this box handles it like a champ. Uh, normally for the Fire TV and the Nexus Player, I have to install MX Player on there, and then uh, you know as soon as this thing launches and you choose a channel, it'll then select. Um, um, I'll then have to select uh, uh, the external player, but this one is actually able to play them all straight from uh, using the internal player. So if I hit the, the menu here, if I go under media player, then you see what I'm talking about. So normally you have to use VC, uh, I'm sorry, VLC or external player to get this to work on the Fire TV, and, and with this box, it plays amazing using just the internal player, which is kind of cool though because it gives you the ability to watch whatever you're watching. Uh, just by selecting the channel here, it lets you watch a preview of that channel here before you uh, select it again and then have it go maximize. So it's kind of cool. You know, it's a... Uh, let's select another box. Or I'm sorry, another box, another channel. Now the history channel. Let's see if that plays. Again, plays amazing. <laughs> I wish the Fire TV would do this because if the Fire TV was able to handle it this well, then, uh, then I wouldn't own any other box. Uh, the Nexus player actually is... Well, I actually kind of lied. The Nexus Player right now is currently my favorite uh, box, only because it supports AC. I'm waiting for that um, the Razer, the Forge TV, because that one is uh, it, it's both gigabit and uh, and they said it supports AC, and that works for me because I have a Netgear uh, R8000. So um, I with the Nexus uh, Player, I'm actually able to not even use Ethernet. I I, I bought the little OTA uh, cable with a with a USB to Ethernet adapter uh, just to get the 100 megabit connection on there, and uh, I, I found myself not even needing it. As you know, as long as I was within a good range from the router, 
uh, AC was plenty fast. And especially since uh, my router supports three different bands, I have uh, a band that's just for these players. So uh, it worked it worked really well. This right here. If you guys don't know what this is, this is an application called STB Emulator. And it runs really well, again, on this box. And again, if you just click on it again, you're just watching TV. How amazing is that? You know, you buy a box, a Fire TV, a Nexus player, an Ouya. Uh, actually, Ouya is the only other one that supports internal player that I've seen. This seem like, this perfect. Like, it's you don't even have to, like, fiddle around with the settings much. You just load it on an Ouya or this box's open hour, and it just plays it amazing. Uh, I tried playing it on the on the Ouya. I'm sorry, on the on the Mojo, and I have to use the MX player. Uh, Fire TV, I have to use the MX player. The Nexus player, you have to use the MX player. But again, for the Ouya and for this box, it just p plays perfect. It, it's almost as if I actually have a uh, a Mag uh, 250 right now because that's how seamless this is. So, and and then one of the other awesome things about this box is that it supports a lot of different keys on the remotes. Which, uh, if you have a Nexus player, <laughs> you you uh, you quickly find out how it's uh, it's lacking keys. Even the, the simple contextual menu button is missing from the the Nexus player, and that's something that, um, you know, you you don't you don't miss on this kind of box. It's 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 a really nice uh, remote. The only thing that I don't like is this is definitely line of sight. So if I'm pointing over here, look at that. I'm pointing to the right, and then I'm hitting down. Nothing. You actually have to point at the device which is extremely annoying so you have to have a line of sight unlike the Nexus player and the, the Fire TV that use uh, Bluetooth even the Fire Stick you know responds better than this um, device and I guess that's what I get for uh, some cheap little knockoff uh, box from another country uh, where they just kind of like mass produce these and uh, and, and I'm sorry, I mean, if you if you like these kind of boxes, that's great. You know, if you've always liked the Popcorn Hour brand, um, Open Media, I believe is what their new name is. But uh, there was a lot of hassle into this, and especially because it was one of those Chinese chips, that RK3288 chip. Again, you have to find a special version of Kodi, so if you didn't know that and you were just using the regular one, you found yourself very frustrated because nothing would work. Um, and then... Oh, I'm sorry. The application did work. You just couldn't get, uh, I believe, the DTS and uh, the surround sound to work correctly. And even that's kind of stupid because you have to go down here, settings, and constantly. Ch and if you turn off your box, you have to turn that that little setting back on, which is extremely annoying. So, uh, so my review of this box is uh, interface sucks. You know, I was actually kind of, I was very happy that it supported this STB emulator quite seamlessly, and that is. Major kudos, because that is something that I've currently been uh, looking at to uh, maybe get rid of uh, of my cable bill, or my cable service. So that was definitely something that was really interesting, to have a box that can do two different things. Uh, something that, uh, that an IPTV receiver can do, and then something that can also play XBMC, but at the same time, like, not have, not feel that like you have to give away, like, Ethernet or wire, like, I'd actually, I don't think this thing supports wireless. So I guess you are giving that up. But uh, it has two USB ports on there. I believe one of them might be USB 3.0. Uh, it has gigabit Ethernet. You know, it, it's it's a nice box, but definitely because it's not one of the major brands out there. It's not the Android TV. It's not the, it's not the Fire TV. You know, they just don't have that budget to create such amazing um, and seamless uh, UI. And you know that... Back then, when I was running the the, the popcorn hour, um, I didn't really care. All you really wanted is you just wanted something to play your your DVD rips and your um, and your DVDs and your Blu-rays and your HDVDs at that time. Like that's all you cared about. You know, you didn't really care about interface. But now, uh, these days, you do care about that. You do want an interface as beautiful as XBMC or as Kodi or you know, you want something that can withstand. Um, Oh, let's go to Sky Sports and see how well that works. <laughs> There's a preview. Make that big. Oh, this is amazing. I love how nice this looks. <laughs> let's just get out. But um, but yeah, you definitely want something with a better interface, and this just seems too sluggish, especially for this day and age where uh, everything is just a lot more seamless. And uh, and I don't know if, it, if it's necessarily just because of that arcade. 
3280 chip or not i mean yes they they talk about for it's a board's 4k and 3d and that's great but you know not a lot of content right now is 4k and and i believe it's uh it's still an hdmi 1.4 uh port in the back so um what is that 30 frames that you can get for 4k you can't even do 60 yet uh still not there you know um, i hate when uh companies try to uh you know try to do like a spec war and uh just like a bullet list like oh, it supports 4k it supports 3d but at the same time it's it's very mediocre um i hate when people do that kind of stuff anyways that's my review of this uh open hour chameleon uh that supports 4k 3d yada 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 supports the world according to this box and uh just wasn't really a fan um i purchased it for 150 on amazon i think i'm gonna actually probably just put it back up on amazon or maybe i just put it up on craigslist and it's always just someone locally um it's a good box um but having tried the fire tv and the nexus player and and especially with the, the with the announcement of that uh of that razor forge tv i, I think it it's better to spend your money on something like that because again this is 150 dollars, so this is more expensive than any other box that we've seen except for the mojo i guess the mojo is still 150 but uh that's running a tegra 4 which is like two years old um but uh but yeah for 150 i mean i i would expect more so um definitely i would be just save my money right now save for a razor forge tv uh, not even purchase this box, and I kind of regret purchasing it just because of uh, how slow it is to scan for your content. I guess I could, you know, put that advanced settings uh, XML, where it stores all your thumbnails on the, on the on my NAS or something. I guess I can do that because I do have a uh, Synology 1812 um, with four. No, I'm sorry, not with four. I think with two or three, four terabytes, and then the rest of them are three terabytes. So I do have the storage for it. It's just. I guess I could run it like that. That way it doesn't store it locally. But, you know, it's something more that you have to do that you didn't really have to do with a Fire TV or with a, with a Nexus player. Or even with a Fire TV stick, you know. And the Fire TV stick's like 40 bucks, and this is like three times that. So I kind of expected more. I'm a little disappointed with it. Yes, it supports gigabit Ethernet, but so what? So, uh, so what that a file takes an extra, you know, 30 seconds or one minute for the file to be transferred all the way. Um, right now I think I'm just going to save my money and get a Razer TV and this sucker is going to go back to Am Amazon or it's going to go back on, or it's going to go up on Craigslist. Uh, definitely not something that I would purchase again. Uh, if you, you know, if you have different opinions then just let me know. I mean, maybe I've missed something, you know, maybe this thing has some awesome features that the other boxes just don't have for a hundred bucks besides this processor. But so what? I mean, these are their processors out there that are, um, that have come out um i think this is in the same generation as that x1 or maybe the the k1 uh, honestly i don't know and maybe i've just made a mistake saying that because now a bunch of people are probably going to flame me for saying that but you know it's just uh because it's not a big brand it just doesn't have the interface to it um so all right thank you uh, that's my review of the open hour chameleon thanks for watching